My name is Glenn Jeffrey, and I'm Professor of Neuroscience at the Institute of Ophthalmology, University College London. And I spend most of my time uh, undertaking research into vision and the retina and problems in vision and problems in aging. The, the thing that I think is quite critical is yeah, improving the quality of life. As we live older, we have a number of demands made upon our body. And we've got to find a way of improving the quality of life, watching television, reading, as we get older, because they're the things that get undermined. How do we do that simply? That's the challenge. Surprisingly, we can affect the pace of aging by the types of light your retina sees, what it experiences. And we have found, along with a number of other labs, it's not just us, that deep red light can actually slow the pace of aging and it can also actually improve aged vision. How do we test it? Well, there is one specific test that's super good for this, and what we do is we present to you on a television screen, or a rather good television screen, a letter. And we ask you to identify the letter, and if you get it right, we make the letter a little more blurry. And if you get it wrong, we make the letter a little bit clearer. So we do that, making letters clearer and more blurry to find out where it is, you, where is your limits of detection. And we do that in two forms. We do it with red letters and we do it with blue letters. And what we've been able to do with this is we've been able to clearly demonstrate that we can improve your color vision and your ability to detect colors in letters at different blurrinesses. That's been the technique we've used to demonstrate that light of certain wavelengths can be used to improve colour vision. Our original project funded by Sight Research UK was looking at the influence of dyer upon a mouse model of macular degeneration. When Covid came in, um, that project wasn't viable anymore. I approached the charity and I said, look, can we swap this? Can we do something with your resources that actually is going to be doable? And they were great. They were very, very flexible. And they allowed us to do something which was translate our research. They could, they'd allowed us to drop a project on animals and move it straight over to a project in humans, translational research. And it's been the best six months research we've ever done, supported by the charity. It is really important to donate, and it's particularly important to donate through the small charities. When you actually donate to that charity, a large proportion of that money comes to me. It comes to people like me that are doing research specifically for the benefit of people's health. Not for academic interest or anything like that. It's delivering, and we know, I mean specifically with our research area, we've got people using devices, we've got people who, you know, we've improved their vision, Hopefully they'll carry on improving their vision and maintain it as they get older. So yeah, we've got there. And, that, and that's another great rewarding thing. It's not that I know a little bit more about one little cell in the brain and that makes me feel good. It's actually we've got there. You know, the, the charity has taken us to that point.